I just wanted to add a few minor thoughts that might be of some value. Um, uh, this came out implicitly in the papers, but I thought some points that could be made here might be of some value. One is, is that at the heart of democracy is the individual human being. But we still have to do some unpacking as to what we mean by that. And I owe, yes, <coughs> yes, uh, at the, <laughs> sorry, uh, 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 at the heart of democracy is the position of the individual human being, the individual. Uh, but there's still a great deal of confusion as to what we mean by the reference individual human being. Uh, the general framework is something like this. The individual human being comes with certain personalized subjectivities, okay? And those subjectivities are relevant to any form of governance and particularly democracy. Uh, what we accept is that there is the, uh, the subjectivity of identity. That's a complex thing by itself, but it's worth noting. Second, there's the, uh, 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 the subjectivity of human needs or values. And needs are there, the anthropologists have shown this, but, but uh, today we now collapse needs into values and we tie them to the International Bill of Rights. And that itself has another implicit notion, namely, that the International Bill of Rights actually is the foundation for the idea of uh, a social democratic constitutional dispensation. We didn't talk about it, but, but it's a really important thing, in particular in the United States where the Trump administration uh, talks about the idea of the deep state and what it means is the destruction of the state. Now you can destroy the state then, but what do you have left? When you destroy the state, you're also destroying the social democratic compact. And Essentially, you're left with plutocracy and oligarchy, okay? So that, that's one of the important threats that we now confront from a superpower. Um, then uh, 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 there is the other side of politics here that hasn't come out. I think it's unfashionable these days, but we might want to think about it again. Uh, uh, in the 1930s, uh, Wilhelm Reich, uh, uh, a rather unpopular psychiatrist, uh, wrote a famous book uh, in which he detailed the emergence of the so-called authoritarian personality. Uh, you know, it's a really important idea. When you look at Stalin uh, expropriating and basically murdering nine million Ukrainians, you realize that this is not a, a slouch of an idea, it's an important idea. Um, and Laswell, the founder of the World Academy, uh, wrote some very famous books which have now become somewhat unpopular psychopathology and politics, world politics and personal insecurity. But what he, ex what he explored there was the idea of certain personality types having a disproportionate influence on the nature of the political process. There was, he said, the idea of a power-centered personality. That personality could be pro-democrat or it could be anti-democratic, but that's the type of personality generally uh, uh, creates to the problem of the shaping and the sharing of power. In democracy, of course, we like to think when we maximize the shaping and the sharing of power, we have a democratic ideal. When we minimize it, we have the Stalinistic ideal, you see. Um, and uh, so I, I just thought, uh, you know, we look at Trump now and we try to, well, what kind of guy is he? Well, he is the quintessential narcissistic personality running a major state. That's quite a dangerous thing, okay? And uh, Russia, well, we've got a quintessential authoritarian running the Russian state, okay? And then, my oh God, I don't know the guy in, in North Korea, but, uh, but he looks something like somebody who needs some psychiatric help, okay? Uh, well, I just thought I'd mention some of these factors that you could work into or we could work into the discussion and hopefully we might be able to enrich. But thank you very much for coming.